Welcome back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com to another blog, to another podcast accessed through the Be Young Ministry YouTube page. Today I'm here in our palatial studios in Elgin, South Carolina with our one-year-old dog, Millie. Millie, you want to say hello to everybody? Uh, she's looking at me like I'm crazy. You can only imagine. She's a just over a one-year-old German pincher. Pincher is German for terrier, and she is a terror. She is. Uh, it's raining outside, and so she's <laughs> she's uh, she's beside herself. Today we come to John chapter seven, verses nineteen through twenty-four, which reads, "Has not Moses given you the law?" Yet none of you, or not one of you, keeps the law. Where are you trying? Why are you trying to kill me? You are demon possessed, the crowd answered. Who is trying to kill you? Jesus said to them, I did one miracle, and you are all amazed. Yet because Moses gave you circumcision, though actually it did not come from Moses, but from the patriarchs, you circumcise a boy on the Sabbath. Now, if a boy can be circumcised on the Sabbath so that the law of Moses may not be broken, why are you angry with me for healing a man's whole body on the Sabbath? Stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. That's John chapter 7, verses 19 through 24. In today's text, the emphasis is on the difference between saving faith and unbelief. The Lord Jesus redirects our attention back to the healing of the lame man at the pool of Bethesda, which took place on the Sabbath. In response, the Jewish leaders uh, were accusing him of being a lawbreaker because he healed the man on the Sabbath. In verse 19, the Lord Jesus questions the religious leaders, essentially saying, you break the law as much as you accuse me of doing it. And in verse 20, the crowd enters the conversation by saying, you are demon-possessed. Nobody is seeking to kill you. In verses 21 through 24, the Lord Jesus reminds these accusers that they were equally guilty by circumcising eight-day-old boys on the Sabbath. You will remember that God prescribed circumcision on the eighth day. The eighth day because it took the blood, eight days to build up enough potassium that would cause the blood to coagulate. Otherwise, the baby would die to death or bleed to death. And so he prescribed it on the eighth day for that reason. And if the eighth day was on the Sabbath, they still circumcised. And that's what the Lord Jesus is getting at here. Then the Lord Jesus informs these ill-educated onlookers that they failed to observe life in a realistic way by God's definition of things. Only then can a correct judgment be arrived upon. The difference between belief and unbelief is a matter of eternal life and death. Of course, the object of our faith is the ultimate, is of ultimate importance. And this is what makes us right before God, the God of the Bible. In addition, the only faith that saves anyone is the type of faith that endures. This kind of faith lasts by feeding on the Word of God. We come to faith through the Word of God, according to Romans 10, 17, and we remain in the faith through the Word of Christ. This is the subject of abiding, as seen in John chapter 17. In verse 24 of today's text, the Lord Jesus gives us the wherewithal to size up something that's true or not. He is answering the question, how can you know if anybody is true? The answer is, when our desires are God's desires, when our pursuits are God's pursuits, then our minds will be able to see the Lord Jesus for who he really is. When that happens, our will will be aligned with God's will will be in sync 
with the truth. It doesn't mean we'll be perfect. doesn't mean we'll be sinless. But we'll walk in the truth more because we'll recognize it more. You see, the evidence that we have arrived upon the truth is when we have a passion for God, exaltation rather than self-exaltation. When we stand for the will of God, we will grow in our love to live for his glory. He will define us, and when he defines us, his glory will, will be paramount. This is why these religious leaders did not know the Lord Jesus as their Messiah. They couldn't because their will was not surrendered to God. I remember when I first experienced the breaking of my will. The hardest thing. It was on the, well, it was just before my dad's death. It was hard. I felt hopeless, and it was good. I had to be crushed in order to be made new. And, of course, that's what he does best. Finally, rather than focusing on the failure of these religious leaders, we do well to take inventory of our own souls. The deepest obstruction to knowing truth is heart obstruction rather than head obstruction. This is an issue of our will, not an issue of our understanding. This is why the Lord Jesus put such emphasis on our need to, to give safe haven in our souls to humility. We need to will self uh, God exaltation more than we will self-exaltation. We need to love making much of God more than we love making much of ourselves. Being opposed to this is the greatest obstacle to knowing God, to knowing the truth. We cannot know the Lord Jesus until our will is to do God's will. I did not say to be perfect at doing God's will, because <laughs> we'll never get to that place. My friends, I'm honored that you access this blog, this podcast. If I can be of any further assistance to you, do not hesitate to send me an email at theyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.